Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And let us prepare our hearts, beloved in Christ, in preparation to celebrate this Eucharist as we begin this season of conversion, the season of Lent. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. A grant, O oh Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. No, no. It is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, Call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. My offenses, truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. 
Give me again the joy of your health. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again, not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, at the favorable time, I have listened to you. On the day of salvation, I come to your help. Well, now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A pure heart create for me, O God and give me again the joy of your help. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose your reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your alms giving must be secret, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in that secret place and your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and, and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your father who sees all that is done in secret and your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let your hearts be broken. Beloved in Christ, have you ever experienced a broken heart? I see lots of head go. <laughs> well, if you have experienced a broken heart, you know that the main reason 
for a broken heart is separation. Your heart is broken when you are separated from someone you deeply love. Your heart is broken when you are disappointed with someone and you temporarily choose to separate yourself from that person. Your heart is broken when you witness excruciating suffering of someone and you feel disconnected, you feel helpless, unable to help that person who is suffering. When you have a broken heart, it seems that the separation is forever, unending, no hope of healing, no hope of reconciling. Beloved in Christ, as we begin this season of conversion, the season of Lent, the church through the scripture readings awakens us to see that our hearts are broken. Our hearts are broken because we have separated ourselves knowingly or unknowingly separated ourselves from God and separated ourselves from the fraternal community from each other. And so this season of Lent, this season of conversion, calls us to open to God's desire. God has only one desire for all of us, and that desire is renew, repair our broken hearts, and reconcile us. And so today in the first reading from the book of Joel, the prophet calls for a renewal of the heart of the entire community. Members who are elders, children in the womb, brides, bridegroom, priests, everyone is called to renew, to repair, and to reconcile. Why? Why? You see, beloved in Christ, after spending years rebuilding the temple, restructuring the temple worship after returning from exile, after years of rebuilding the walls surrounding Jerusalem after the exile, the citizens of, of Jerusalem had become so proud and comfortable with their achievement. After the destruction of the uh, exile experience, they've rebuilt, they've renewed their lives, and they've become so comfortable that they believe that history will now come to an end. God's salvation has reached its pinnacle. God has saved us. God has protected us. God has allowed us to rebuild. Everything is fine. Everything is nice. And so God will come. But Joel refutes this and says, No, your hearts are broken. It is not time to pat yourselves on the shoulder, over the shoulder. But you must return to the merciful and compassionate God of the Exodus. In other words, it is what Pope Francis calls isolated conscience. Isolated conscience is when you and I withdraw spiritually from the body to which we belong, from the wider body to which we belong, closing us in on our own self-interest. In other words, as long as I am fine, as long as my spirituality is fine, as long as I'm okay, to hell with everybody else. That's what Pope Francis called isolated conscience. And that's what the people of Israel and Jerusalem were suffering, because they were okay. No concern about anybody else. In the second reading, Paul helps us to understand God's desire when we are separated from him. God has only one desire, and that desire is reconcile, reconciliation. And so Paul tells us that through Jesus Christ, God has reconciled us to himself. That separation that has occurred, God has become one like us in order to reconcile us to himself. Jesus Christ, Paul tells us in his own words, Jesus' heart was broken. Jesus' heart was broken by our sins, by our failures, by our mistakes, by our violence, in order to reconcile us to God. 
And if we have been reconciled to God, if our broken hearts have been renewed and repaired, if our hearts are, are reconciled, now we must become ambassadors of reconciliation in our own relationships. In other words, if our broken hearts have been healed, then we must go, go out and heal broken hearts of others. Moving from theory to practical, Matthew recommends to his community three practical actions to which, in which to mend our broken hearts. Number one, fasting. You see, beloved in Christ, fasting enables us to reconnect with God who comes to us in the poor. When we choose to give up something, when we choose to give up something, it enables us to develop solidarity with the poor in which God lives. As Pope Francis tells us, in embracing the experience of poverty and hunger, those who fast make themselves poor with the poor. Therefore, fasting involves being free from all that weighs us down in order to open the doors of our hearts to those who come to us who are poor. Two, prayer. Prayer is an intense and intimate encounter with the compassionate and merciful Father. And so in this encounter, beloved in Christ, hope is reignited. That is, we grow in the belief that history does not end with our mistakes, our violence, our injustice, our sins, or that of others. So we, 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 we are renewed in hope. We leave when we go into intense prayer. We leave renewed, like the prodigal son, when he returns home and encountered the father. He leaves renewed. Almsgiving. Pope Francis has this to say about almsgiving. He says, love suffers when others are anguished. Love suffers when others are lonely. Love suffers when others are sick, homeless, despised, or in need. And so almsgiving is the highest expression of faith. Because we believe in God's unconditional, whom, unconditional love who makes his reign shine on the evil and the good alike, who makes, this, the, the, who, who makes the rain falls on those who are righteous and unrighteous. So almsgiving is that highest expression of faith. And so, beloved in Christ, as we begin this season of conversion, what is the missionary challenge? Because our sins have separated us from God and from each other, Lent is a season of healing our broken hearts. Hearts, your hearts, my heart, that has become hardened, indifferent, cold, malicious, revengeful, unkind, unjust, wicked, and uncaring. You know, beloved in Christ, when we are physically sick, what do we do? We go and visit what? The doctor. And the doctor does what? The doctor makes a, a diagnosis. And then after giving us a diagnosis, what the doctor does is to give us a prescription. Well, beloved, today, this Ash Wednesday, this Ash Wednesday celebration is our doctor's visit in which our illness has been diagnosed. Indifference, cold heart, malicious revengefulness, and the prescription that the church through the scriptures have given to us is prayer almsgiving and fasting. Will we be faithful in taking our prescription this Lent? 
Will we identify with those unhealthy personal and social habits from which we need to fast? Will we spend more quality time in prayer during these 40 days? Will we invest meaningfully our time, our talent, and our treasure to encounter and develop relationships with those who are poor? The doctor has given us 40 days to take these prescriptions in order to heal our broken hearts. You and I know when we do not follow doctor's instructions and do not take our prescriptions, you and I know what happens. I don't have to give you a dissertation on that. The challenge that is given to us this doctor's visit on Ash Wednesday is, will we use these 40 days of Lent to take our prescriptions? Amen. Beloved in Christ, let us stand as we pray God's blessing upon these ashes. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask our Father that he be pleased to bless with abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our foreheads in penance. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness, pour out the grace of your blessing upon these ashes and upon your servants who are marked with these ashes that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your son through Christ our Lord. Amen. As with the distribution of communion, we will, three of us will, you will stand in your positions and three of us will come around to mark your foreheads with the, the ashes. ashes the words repent and believe in the gospel or remember you are dust and to dust you shall return shall be said aloud
renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O God, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. pray stand as we pray we pray for Holy Father Francis that as he leads the Universal Church during this season of conversion that God may give him the strength and the courage to to be focused and to truly point us to the merciful and compassionate love of the Father Lord hear us and we pray for ourselves that as we begin this season of conversion, as we, with the season, with the celebration of Ash Wednesday, our doctor's visit, that we may have the courage, the fortitude, and the strength to take our prescriptions and to, during this season, so that at the end of the season, as we celebrate the great Paschal Easter mysteries, we may, we may enter it renewed and refilled. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray in a special way for for Caleb as he celebrates his birthday today. May God truly bless him abundantly. Lord, hear us. Lord, and for the healing of Ishan Ram, Ramsarup and Randall Campbell, Lord, hear us. Lord, for the special intention of Roger, Carmelita, and Jason, Lord, hear us. Lord, and for Phyllis Karu, as, as she celebrates her 91st birthday, truly may God bless her abundantly. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear merciful and compassionate and merciful God, we have presented to you these our petitions. Grant them to us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we, as we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through the works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devotedly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace and with, and with you bestow on your sons and daughters all the grace that you give us. And so with all the angels and saints and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, savor of the world, by your cross. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, at this time, those right here in the chapel will receive Jesus sacramentally in Holy Communion. You're invited to join us and make your own spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I now cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you, Lord, and I unite myself entirely to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you, O divine Savior, O Jesus, O blessed sacrament. Jesus Christ. The scriptures are littered with so many faith stories of persons whose hearts are broken, but God reconciled and healed. And so as we begin this season of conversion, this season of Lent, I invite you to befriend, befriend the parable of the prodigal son. And in that story, in that wonderful story, we'll see how the father embracing and welcoming the prodigal son healed his broken heart. His heart was broken because he was separated from his family. And so as we enter this season with our own broken hearts, let us commit ourselves faithfully to take our prescription that the doctor God has prescribed almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. And in doing so, we are guaranteed that we will emerge from this season and forever healed, reunited and reconciled with God and with each other. Let us pray. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration ends. Go and announce the good news.
Nice.